Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. And as always, I'm filming this video in one go, so if I stumble over my words moving forwards, I apologise about that. And also, if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well, if there's any lag, anything like that at all, sadly it cannot be helped, and hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision 2022 related video here on my channel, and today I'm going to be telling you my predictions for the semi final running orders which we should be getting within the next two weeks or so of course as has been the case for a number of years now the running orders for the semi-finals and indeed the final are determined by the producers of the contest in consultation with the european broadcasting union now it wouldn't surprise me if the ebu and the producers of the show already had the running orders ready to go before all of the songs were released um but obviously we just have to wait for that official announcement. I've seen a few other people do this, and I'm sure more people will be doing this over the coming days as well. It's just something fun to do. I would not take it too seriously. I've been doing this personally for years, and I usually end up getting about three or four countries in the correct slots in the running order. But what I've got here are my pieces of card, and I do need to fill them out with the artists' names, the song names, details about each track as well. But, for example, if I just hold up uh, Ukraine's sheet there, all it has is the name of the country so far, but there is a box where I can put the running order number as well once we know it. So, it's going to be a bit of a repetitive video, this one. I should take this opportunity to say, check out the links in the description to my other social media pages if you so wish. An image of my running orders will be up on my Twitter page very shortly. So, semi-final one. Now, there are videos on YouTube, actually, where people uh, who are producing the contest and uh, the EBU and what have you talk about how they put the running orders together. And really, it's mainly genre. You don't want three ballads in a row if you can help it, or three really up-tempo songs in a row, three really expressive tracks in a row as well. And obviously they know things that we as Eurovision fans don't. So they might already have a very good idea as to props on stage, and also commercial breaks. Uh, songs that have maybe a lot of props on stage, or something quite innovative, maybe they will go on after a commercial break, because in the 32nd changeover when the postcards are shown on screen there might not be enough time to get it all ready with a commercial break you've got a little bit longer so i have taken that into consideration just a little bit too and really as well i've thought about language i've thought about whether it's a male act or a female act or a band you don't necessarily want three guys in a row if you can help it although i think that happens once or twice with me and I suppose it's just the feel of each song, the vibe, the atmosphere that you're getting from it. Usually what I would do is I would put all of the songs into a YouTube playlist, two YouTube playlists, and I have done that. And then I would listen to them one after the other in one go and just sort of rediscover them again. Because I don't know about you, but it's been ages since I listened to some of these songs in full. It's been so long. And then I'll put the running order together. What I've done this year is I've just put the running orders together without really listening to the songs again. But I will go through those playlists I've made very soon. And I'm looking forward to rediscovering some of these tracks and no doubt enjoying them more than I did at the time. So, semi-final one. Do feel free to let me know your running orders as well. I've been totally neutral um, as best as possible here. I've put aside personal preferences. I haven't really taken into consideration the betting odds or anything like that. So here we go. Opening the first semi-final. Let me split this into their respective halves. So semi-final one, by the way, is on yellow card for me this year. Um, yeah, ideally you want to start the show with something that's quite memorable, shows off the stage in all its glory, something quite powerful, fierce, fantastic, gets the crowd on their feet, gets them really excited for what's to come, sets the tone for the rest of the show. So for me, I was originally going to have Slovenia, then I was going to have Latvia, but I thought having a slightly tongue-in-cheek, maybe slightly novelty-type track on first, is that really what you want to do? I'm not sure. So I've gone with Albania. And it's worth saying, this is back to front on camera, but it does say, Albania. Um, last year we had Lithuania open the first semi-final, 
and in 2019 it was Cyprus. Two countries that we felt as Eurovision fans were very sure qualifiers at the time. Cyprus only just made the cut, Lithuania sailed through. So being on first isn't really a damaging thing at all. If anything, it's a badge of honour. Congratulations, you will get the contest underway. So Albania, first alphabetically, might well get the chance to do that in Turin. Ronella Hayati with Secret. So, next up, could have gone with a ballad. Lithuania, Switzerland, uh, Netherlands maybe. But I've kept it up tempo. And just a different type of expression. You know, Albania is more of an ethnic bop. This is more rock. It is Bulgaria. Intelligent music project with intention. Uh, I think a lot of people would just put Bulgaria on second anyway. They're not seen as qualifiers at all by the overwhelming majority of people out there. I don't think they're qualifying either. I haven't put them on second just for the hell of it. I did have them in fourth place originally. But, yeah, I don't see this being on too late in the first half of the running order. After that, let's now take it down a notch. You want there to be this sort of undulation between upbeat and sort of down-tempo tracks. So song three, Lithuania, Monica Liu with Sentimenti. And um, yeah, this is my least favourite of the year, unfortunately. But when I listen to it again a few more times, no doubt I will enjoy it more. But yes, um, out of the first couple of tracks... Albania's going through, absolutely. Bulgaria, probably not. And then I'm looking at the next country, probably not as well. So Lithuania, you know, there's a place for them in the final. This might really stand out. And we've gone from, as I said, ethnic bop, bit of rock, and now we've got a sort of jazzy tune by a female performer. Let's change it up with song four. Let's go back to a male group. Something a little bit tongue-in-cheek, as I said earlier. Let's have Eat Your Salad by Chitty Zeni for Latvia. Geographical neighbours to Lithuania, of course. Um, yeah, I feel like with really uh, expressive, quirky, quite humorous style tunes, I would never really put them on first or last. I'd, ha I'd have them somewhere else, uh, just to sort of break up the more serious efforts, maybe. Anyway, Latvia Song 4. So that's a male group, so let's go back to a woman now. Thought about Switzerland, ended up going for the Netherlands as Song 5. De Diepte by Ace Teen. This is great. It's my number two of the year. Really loving it. Loved it when I first heard it. Still enjoy it now. Going through no trouble whatsoever. And that's quite a moody sort of serious track. So coming after Latvia, you know, it's a bit of a breather. You've had your fun. Now let's bring it down a notch. <laughs> then let's have some more fun. Why not? That's what Eurovision is all about. Um, now I'm thinking there might be a commercial break after five tracks. If that is indeed the case, and I'm thinking very loosely here, after that commercial break, Moldova takes to the stage, song six. This is obviously Trenja Lettl by Stop Shistub and Fratzi Adverhoff. We can't rule this song out qualifying because Moldova know how to do staging. They're probably going to have a great big train on stage with them. It's catchy, it's up-tempo, it's fun. They're just having a whale of a time on stage. Um, yeah, Moldova. Usually punch above their weight might well happen again, song six. Now it gets a bit difficult because there's only really one ballad left in the first half of the first semi-final. So it's like with Albania and Bulgaria. They're both quite upbeat, but very different types of songs sonically. Ethno, bop and rock. So let's go from Moldovan folk to Slovenian disco. This is LPS with disco. Uh, song number seven, isn't it? Um... The more I hear this, the more I think it could well make the cut and be in the Saturday Grand Final. Let me know your thoughts on that. It's amazing how your opinions can change so quickly. Um, I mean, there are other songs as well, even from semi-final two. I listen to them and I think, no, this is not going through. And then the next day I think, hang on a minute, maybe it will. So difficult to predict this year, more so than perhaps previous years. But yes, Slovenia, song seven. Then let's rein it in. Calm it down. A sort of elegant, classy ballad. Switzerland as song number eight. Marius Bear with Boys Do Cry. Um, this is another example of a song that I think won't go through one day, will go through the next. Very, very difficult to say with the Swiss this year. Something tells me the Jews will adore him. 
and the public not so much, but we wait and see. That means if you really know the running order and the semi-final allocation and all of that quite well, you'll know that the last song in the first half of the first semi-final, Ukraine, Kalash Orchestra with Stefania. I really like it. It's the very clear favourite to win. I'm not too sure about that, but it's going to do well anyway. And um, while I did say at the start, I don't really take into consideration betting odds or anything like that, it does seem more often than not that some of the favourites to win get a really cushy slot in the running order. So that's why I've put Ukraine on last in the first half. I would not be surprised if that indeed is what happens. Moving into the second half now, this was really tricky. Um, with the first half, it is worth saying that we do have four male acts in a row, Moldova, Slovenia, Switzerland and Ukraine. That's why I was going to switch Switzerland and the Netherlands around. But again, it's just the feel of the song. You know, that's all I can really say. Second half, I did tell you this would be repetitive. We're going to get song 10 underway then, and it's going to be Croatia, Mia Dimšić with Guilty Pleasure, and it is a bit of a guilty pleasure for some. It's a real grower, I've always liked it, probably my favourite Croatian entry for years actually. Um, and it's just that change of pace, that change of tone, something very sweet. Then, something that's also fairly low-key, but a bit more folky, and we've gone from English to another language. We have Iceland, Melchaik and the Soul with the Rising Sun by Sister. Uh, very much an underrated gem, you could say, this year. And they could do something really impressive with the staging and the lighting shining through those arches that they'll be on stage in Turin. It could be a really wonderful, beautiful moment. So, Croatia and Iceland. Yeah, you know, nothing really spectacular going on so let's change that by introducing Norway there are only two male acts in the second half of the first semi-final Subwoofer and we can't see their faces and Lumix for Austria who doesn't sing one of them is bound to be on last that's my thinking one of these songs Norway or Austria going to be on last um, Norway for me on earlier like I said I don't really like the idea of putting a very sort of funny but enjoyable track on right at the end you know, one that's veering into silly territory, you know. Not that this is a super silly song, although it is called Give That Wolf a Banana. You know what I mean here. Anyway, song 12. Is it song 12? I've lost count already. Yes, Norway. There we go. Subwolf for Give That Wolf a Banana. Um, yeah, this is going to be very fun. Pyros, flashing lights, quirky staging, choreography. It's all there. All the hallmarks of a Eurovision classic. Following on from Norway, slow it down. Because if some people don't like Norway, they might really like Portugal. Saudada, Saudada, I've got it back to front. Saudada, Saudada by Maro. I love this. Absolutely love the chilled out vibe this is giving me. Mm -mm -mm. It takes me to another place for three minutes. And to be honest, I'm more excited about seeing Portugal's entry on stage than Norway's. This is what I mean. This won't be for everybody. Other people might enjoy this instead. Um, yeah, Portugal, wonderful. Song 13, unlucky for some. Really want this to qualify, not sure it will. Could be damaged, coming after something like Norway. Could be damaged no matter, no matter, no matter where Portugal is in the second half of the first semi-final. Um, but yeah, it's got to go somewhere, so song 13. After that, let's change the pace again. Mm. Denmark, song 14. Dark Horse, can't rule this one out qualifying, it's happened before with the Danes. So we've gone with, you know, a sort of, how would you describe the Norwegian track? Let's just say pop. You've gone from English language pop to low-key Portuguese ballad to English language Danish girl group kicking ass rock. After Denmark, three songs left. I've gone with Armenia. I was going to have Armenia earlier on, but if you had Armenia and Iceland next to each other, I don't know. I'm thinking of the flow again, that undulation of sound, and it's not quite working for me. So Armenia's on later. Dark Horse, hear it galloping in. Semi-final one is full of them. Uh, this is Rosalind with Snap. Really like it. This could be a big hit. Absolutely. All over the world. Promote it well. I, I think it could happen. Maybe I'm talking rubbish, but I don't see any reason why not. 
this could be a big hit, uh, which means it probably won't even qualify. But there we are. Um, there's loads of women in the second half of the first semi-final, so they're all bunched together, really. But there we are. And then the penultimate track, penultimate song pulling power, Greece. Amanda Giorgiadi Tenfjord with Die Together. Love this. One of the favourites to win. Will it win? It could happen if the other big hitters, for some reason, flop on the night. Greece is going through. Strongest entry for years. Nothing else to say about it. And then let's finish with a party. As we started, really. Austria, the other guy, Lumix featuring Pia Maria with Halo. This is going to be great. It's going to get the crowd really revved up again after more emotionally charged tracks beforehand. And Austria probably going through, mainly thanks to public support. Not sure the juries will really adore them. But anyway, that's it, semi-final one. And like I said, if you want to see an image of the semi-final one running order and the semi-final two running order, which I'll discuss in a moment, uh, that'll be on my Twitter page shortly. So, hopefully you're bearing with me. My word, this is a long video again. Semi-final two on light blue pieces of card. So... Again, very difficult to do. What I did yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, is I just sat on my bedroom floor and just organised them, kept moving them around, kept humming the tunes, working out what was the best way to put them into some sort of order. So, opening semi-final two. Again, you want to start off with a bang, something that's quite party-like, uh, something fun, and... Something that might just put a smile on your face. And for a lot of people, it might be the Israeli track. Mikhail Ben David with I Am. I'm not really a lover of this song. Might qualify, though. Israel's track record hasn't been too bad of late. So that's song one. Song two, change of pace. Something a bit more quirky um, and in a different language. Serbia, song two. I know some people might watch this and think, How dare you! put Serbia on second. Get out! Well, somebody's got to go second. And the Serbian song is probably going through anyway, no matter where Constractor is in the running order. This is Incorpore Sano. It is growing on me. Not a huge amount, but it is growing on me. It's just so catchy. That refrain. That's the selling point of this track. You ask me how the verses go, not a clue. You ask me how the chorus goes, I'm just, you know, I'm well away. So, Serbia song two. Might well overshadow Israel on first, even though Israel is the more flashy number. Uh, song three, bit of rock now. Two rock songs in the first half of the second semi-final. Finland and San Marino. I've opted for San Marino to be on earlier. This is Achille Lauro with Stripper. We know what it's going to be. Him on stage, uh, flashing his tattoos, being a bit provocative. This sort of bluesy, dirty rock song. Fair enough, song three. Then let's go from that, which is maybe going to, you know... Uh, cause a few eyebrows to be raised to something a bit more light-hearted and cliched. Malta, song four. Jury Darling, Malta. Could happen again. I am what I am, Emma Muscat. I really don't mind this. Yes, it's nothing original, but I wouldn't be surprised if she goes through. So we've gone from male soloist, female soloist, male soloist, female soloist. Now let's go for a male band, Georgia, uh, song five, Circus Mirkus, with Lock Me In. Who knows how this is going to be staged? Not a clue. I don't think we've had a live performance yet. We know that this is a very unusual sort of indie new wave act. And uh, the outfits could be quite something. The staging could be quite something. Very, very odd. But I'm sure a lot of people will really love this. The live performance will elevate it no end. After Georgia, which is a bit of fun, something more serious. Azerbaijan. The song that we got yesterday at the time of recording this video, Nadia Rustamli with Fade to Black, is song number six for me. Um, it seems as though a lot of people are really enjoying this. I'm surprised. I don't think it's anything that incredible, I'll be totally honest with you. But yeah, mostly between 10th and 15th place in a lot of people's rankings of all the songs. And uh, that's not too bad, is it? Uh, I don't think Azerbaijan is winning, but probably going to qualify. Then, probably a commercial break. So let's have a big blast of rock, the other big blast of rock, arguably the bigger blast of rock, the Rasmus, Jezebel, Finland. Song 7 is this, I think so. Um, yeah, not much to say about this. They need to really go big here, because it's a big, big song. You can't do what you did at UMK. For me, that felt totally flat, and the vocals weren't brilliant either. Improve in all areas, and this could be really, really something. 
Otherwise, maybe Finland actually misses out. Unbelievable. I wouldn't have thought that when this song was chosen by the Finnish public. But, yeah. Who knows? After Finland, uh, let's go for something that is more chilled out, very summery, breezy, lighthearted, that sort of thing, and in a different language. It is Ela by Andromachi for Cyprus, song 8. I had this on a bit earlier. I think I had this as song 4 or something. Yeah, I had Moltron later and Cyprus on earlier. But anyway, Cyprus going through. Brilliant track record when it comes to qualification at Eurovision. Not Mr. Final in absolutely ages. Really lovely song. I do wonder, the more I hear parts of this track, and I will listen to it again in full shortly, is this really going to do as well as we think? Will people be bored by this? It's very possible. I wonder. And then, closing the first half, as I said with Ukraine earlier, the favourites usually get a cushy slot. Hence Australia. Sheldon Riley, not the same. Closing the first half of the second semi-final with not the same. The more I hear this, the more I think the juries are just going to absolutely go nuts for him. It's a jury darling. It's written in the stars. He's a great singer. Obviously, it's very emotional. Maybe he overdoes the emotion. I actually think that's the issue with this song for a lot of Eurovision fans. The song, maybe it's dull, maybe it's boring. Fine. But actually, I think a lot of people are put off by the emotion he shows when singing this. It's an odd thing. It seems so trivial. But he is a very emotional guy when singing this song. We've seen that. And it'll be the same at Eurovision with that beaded veil over his face and everything. No doubt that will stay. Um, might do really well with the juries. Might come crashing back down to earth with the public score. But going through, no question. And it is different, of course, in sound from Cyprus and a different language. So there we go. That is the first half of the second semi-final. Moving on, second half. Here we go. Let's go with something a bit more poppy, um, a bit more sassy, maybe. Uh, maybe something a bit more charismatic. And let's go with Belgium. Jeremy Maquisa with Miss You. For me, massive disappointment, this song. Not sure it's going through. I really don't know if this is going through at all. Got to stage it well, but something tells me it'll be just like the music video where he's dancing with a group of other guys. Nothing else is really going on. I don't know. Some of Belgium's staging over the past couple of years hasn't actually been that amazing. It could have been a lot, lot better at the time. Uh, and Belgium this year, I haven't got high hopes, I'll be totally honest. But we wait and see. Now let's have a woman. North Macedonia next. Andrea with circles, underrated. Might well finish last in this second semi-final. I can see it happening, but this should not be disgraced. It's really good. She sounds good. I've got nothing else to say about it. Then, we've had a woman. Let's go with a guy. And let's go with something more upbeat. Something that's going to have a bit of choreography. Maybe a bit too over-reliant on the choreography. We'll wait and see. It's Romania, WRS, with Shamame. And I think there's a revamp of this coming out very soon. I'm not entirely sure. And I think how this is going to be staged in Turin is very similar to how it was staged at the national final. So I think it's just going to be maybe a copy-paste scenario, but there we go. After Romania, uh, another guy, but this one is maybe not as fun, maybe more serious. Um, not going to have really any choreography to it at all. It's Poland, Ochman with River. Going through, Poland back in the final this year, I've no doubt about it. And then we're into the last couple of tracks, ladies and gentlemen. Do bear with me. So, uh, let's then ramp up the sass factor again with a woman. Brooke with That's Rich for Ireland. Really hoping Ireland either make the final or don't get, get disgraced in the results. I, I don't want this finishing anywhere near last place because it's too good to finish anywhere there um change the outfit do something cool with the staging could be onto something special then sweden yes indeed this is song 15 isn't it i think so cordelia jacobs hold me closer i've spoken about this song plenty of times already we're going from something very poppy to something a lot more raw and honest maybe after sweden let's change the tempo a bit and go with a guy Stefan with Hope for Estonia. Really hoping that uh, the staging's just a bit tighter, if you see what I mean, in Turin with this one. We know he can really sing. I don't think he needs anything else on stage with him, to be honest. But 
I say that. Will the stage feel a bit empty otherwise? I don't know. The penultimate song, Montenegro, this would be a really great place for them, actually, because as much as I can see Estonia and Sweden overshadowing the Montenegro entry, being on later might really work in Vladana's favour. This is Vladana with Breathe, really nice track, bit underrated, great vocals. It gives me North Macedonia 2019 vibes a little bit, you know. I'm not saying that Vladana is going to win the jury vote in the final, heavens above, no, but might do better than we think. That means Czech Republic closing semi-final two, Electro Pop, We Are Domi with Lights Off. The more I hear this, the more I love it. It's my number 11 at the moment. The music video is great, great vocals, great beat, really good, energetic, up-tempo track to close the second semi-final, finishing in the way we started with something a little bit fun, something that gets the crowd excited, the audience watching at home excited. There we go. That is semi-final two. So, just to recap, semi-final one, Albania to open and uh, Austria to close. Semi-final two, Israel to open, Czech Republic to close. I should say I've got the automatic finalists here. They're on green bits of card, but we don't need them at the moment. That's it. Wow, what a ramble. What a surprise. Uh, do let me know what you think. It's just a bit of fun. It's not serious. The chances of these running orders being anything accurate whatsoever are exceptionally slim. But we'll find out soon enough, and then we can really start making predictions. Because there's usually an equal split. You know, five go through from the first half, five go through from the second half, or it's four, six, six, four, something along those lines. And we don't often get, you know, five or six qualifiers in a row. Um, usually it's like two go through, two miss out, one goes through, two miss out, one, you know, you know what I mean. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. And obviously, once we get the official running orders, um, it might give us an indication as to who might have fancy props on stage. Um, all this song's on last, that must mean that they've got this going on. We can start thinking along those lines. But yes, I'll be on the lookout for other people's running orders predictions and videos and things like that. And there will be a video from me very soon making a very early prediction for the results of the semi-finals. That will be an interesting one, I'm sure, when I get round to thinking about it in more depth. Until next time, let me know what you think. I apologise for the repetitive nature and rambling nature of this video, but there we are, that's me all over. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, check out my other social media links in the description, if you so wish. Until next time, when it will probably be that video predicting the results, even though we're only in March... Stay safe, take care, see you soon.